all of us have very high conviction on individual stocks. We believe that these stocks must be owned for a very long time. When our conviction runs so high, the fact that the valuations are running very high does not disturb us too much. I was recently talking to a friend who had investments in a stock. He asked me about that stock some time ago and I told him that it is a good business, it is well run, its valuations are rich, they could become richer, but at some point the valuations will stop going up. We reconnected for another conversation on the same stock. He was aware that the valuations are running high, but he was so convinced on the business. His conviction on the business is running so strong that he is willing to overlook the valuation excess in the stock. Typically in such a situation, the investor has two probable situations before him. The first one is when the stock stays right there for a very long period of time. We call that a time correction. The second one is where the stock loses valuation and again regains it after a while. The loss of valuation and the gain are called as price correction. In this video, we are going to talk about time correction. We seem to be headed towards a phase where a number of stocks which we really like will go through time corrections. The business may be exceptional, but the stock may not deliver performance. The difference between the past cycles and this cycles is equally important when it comes to time correction. Usually time correction happens in the blue chips, but with passage of time, we are seeing time corrections spread to mid caps small caps and probably even micro cap because they are so tightly owned. There is no floating stock. Everybody has bought these stocks and are holding on to their positions very firmly. So, there is not much selling. In the absence of selling, you are able to keep the valuation higher. If somebody loses conviction at some point in time, then he would sell that stock and that would break the time correction and turn it into a price correction. When you have time correction happening across the market, as an investor, can you afford to ignore a time correction? Let us get Subra's view on this. Subra, what do you think? Can I afford to ignore a time correction when you have time correction almost showing a secular presence across themes and market? Time correction is a peculiarly Indian investment word. If you try using time correction to somebody who does not invest, they would not even understand what it means. And I have not seen any uh, foreign investor use this, uh, Morgan Housel or somebody does not call it time correction. But we call it time correction and all of us understand what it is. So, when you buy a share, let us talk of HDFC bank today because last 2-3 years the returns on it are zero. But if you take the CAGR on it over the last say 20 years, it will be a very good number, very healthy number, especially if you include a TRI on the basis of dividend plus appreciation will be a good number. So the question is, uh, will you be able to sit through the time correction if you believe that India is a growing market, India is, uh, I mean it is worthwhile being an optimist in India. You should be invested in banks which has say 20% market share or 15% market share knowing that it will keep its market share and gain especially during a down market. What do you do with this time correction? Well, time correction will happen. You have to have the ability to sit it out. But yes, time correction has happened across, I mean Microsoft it has happened, Reliance it has happened, in indices it has happened, right? So, being able to sit through a time correction is very important. Yes, time correction will happen. There is a Tamil saying which says when you light a lamp, either the wick will be over first or the oil will be over first. Similarly, even in an, as an entrepreneur, sometimes the sales guys will complain that look production is not giving me enough or sometimes production guys will complain that we are made and it is sitting in the uh, go down and these people are not selling enough. You can never get 
perfect operations and sales right sometimes operations will be added sometimes sales will be added so sometimes share price will be added sometimes earnings will be added so if you see a share which for 4 years has not given you anything in terms of price which has still given you well in terms of dividend because the eps is there the performance is there the dividends are there so it has given you some return but not on price so yes it can remain steady like this and one day it would could do a hockey stick which is it looks like a hockey stick but if you draw a line from here to here then it's the it's a fair price that it has gone so these things will happen and uh, you have to be ready for it so in a good portfolio if you have been holding for 20 years you will realize out of 20 years all the returns have come in 5 or 6 years correct it is the other time when you have to just sit tight and uh, but today we see time correction in small cap, mid cap, micro cap. Earlier we used to have time correction mostly in the blue chips and maybe in the upper end of the mid cap segment. You never had it in a, such a secular sense. Which means that uh, investors are now buying and waiting for a long period of time, hoping that that hockey stick will play out. True. But you also have the inverse having. For example, ITC was in a time correction for a very long time. Yes. It broke down. And lost nearly 45% of the value, or probably even more, over the COVID period, the initial period. So, investors who thought that uh, this is only a time correction, I would make a loss in ITC, but suddenly in hot water. It's another matter that they turned it into a buying opportunity and made money on that decision that is the decision they took after the price correction but the stock they bought before the time correction started didn't make money for them so effectively uh, betting on a time correction doesn't always make money i'll give you another example today asian trades before covid and today's price you not beaten inflation over a three-year period it's only if you compare with the covid bottom that you have done well so, the best of companies go through these time corrections and the money is made only if there is a price correction that I given ITC and Asian trades to point out that all the money made was not because investors sat out the time correction, but because they doubled down or they bought, more. bought more in the price correction. So, where you do a time correction today is becoming more technical, more nuanced. And you need to be very specific. Today you are seeing people own stocks willingly through a time correction in businesses which are doing large capex like the chemical space or the API space. Now after this capex, whether the business will go back to its pre time correction fundamentals that is will the operating metrics be the same will the company be able to make the same EBITDA margin uh, will costs be under check or can you improve cost can you expect the same type of realizations you had that you had in COVID period after you expand the capacity could we see the numerator and denominator both going in directions which are adverse but investors are not thinking about all this because of recency bias they feel that they can weather a time correction they taken all the peak parameters and they are waiting and ironically mutual funds are also in this cap actually what do you think about this if you see anybody who has entered the market in 2003 and is there till today can legitimately say he's got 20 years of experience. Uh, experience but in this 20 years he has not seen a long time correction in a portfolio he may have on the index he may have seen on a single share he may have seen it in sun pharma he may have seen it in the lupin he may have seen it in hul or reliance it, these are not bad companies but he has not seen it in the index and lot of people are investing in portfolios so portfolios have not gone through a long time correction of say six years so, you are saying that between 2003 and now, most of the money has been made by people who bought into time into price correction. 
and not by people who have experience playing time correction. Go ahead. Correct. Because if you see 1996 to 2002, the market went nowhere. People gave up their careers in equity and broking and went off to something else. Correct. People gave up jobs in mutual funds and went to insurance, saying insurance budgets are bigger, more things will happen. People just gave up everything. 2001 to 4, 5 also was like that. Yeah, but 2003 onwards, slightly equities started doing well. In fact, that was the time when many people who had bought equities earlier, equity mutual funds, <coughs> where the NAV was below 10, were happy redeeming at 10. Saying I entered at 10, now my NAV is back to 10, I will exit. Because it had gone from 10 to 7. After 10, it may have gone to 20, but they were relieved that, oh my God, my capital has come back. So, people are not used to sitting with, uh, holding their breath. But actually, uh, uh, when there is price correction and when there is time correction, people wait because they have some uh, idea in their head, I should not sell below cost. So, if they bought at 100 and the price has gone to 70, they will not bite the bullet and take the loss. They will wait. It is not nothing to do with their conviction. It is just that they feel, I will not sell below 100. They wait from 100, it had gone to 70, they will wait for it to come back to 100 and then sell. I call these people holder of the recession. Right during the recession, they will hold and at the end of the recession, they will sell. So, managing a uh, Time correction is not going to be easy because that's the time maybe you should be buying more. But if you don't have conviction what you have done, you will not do it, you will not buy, you will not add more. And so it does not help. So time correction does not help everybody unless you have the conviction saying, okay, here is the report by a guy who is a short seller. Because of him, some companies are doing badly and because of that, some more companies are doing badly. So, buying those shares when there is a price correction or a time correction, all those things have to be done for you to really benefit. But if it's a large cap stock in which you are doing your SIP, let's say it is a Reliance or HDFC bank, this is a great time to be picking up stock. But understand that I am also saying this with a hindsight bias. Because if the price goes up from 100 to 70, stays at 70, then goes down to 50, you might get hurt by uh, averaging even from 100 to 70 because that would people say, oh, you should not, not have caught a falling knife. So, should you catch a falling knife? Should you stay patiently? Should you buy more? It will all depend on your own personality and your own portfolio. Subra, we actually started talking about time correction, but 